Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Fabric Lined Adult Crochet Mask. So this mask here has been designed for adults and it has two layers of fabric as well as a crochet covering. When masks first came out for COVID-19, it was determined that it wasn't sure what type of mask and the types of fabrics and etc. It's now July 2020 and more than ever we need to be wearing masks to protect us from spreading our germs to others. So I'm making this mask for myself. Do what you feel is right for you. There's two layers of fabric that has been sewed to this particular mask and then there's a crochet covering just like you see. So I'm going to be using cotton yarn today lily sugar and cream because cotton can be washed in a very hot temperature in order to disinfect it. So that's what I'm using. I'm also using some old t-shirt just like I have here. So it was an old uh, shirt that I had that matches the colors of my particular mask. So I'm making Daniel's mask here on camera and then I'm going to switch over to this mask here as well today. So I'm going to give you some ideas and we're going to get ourselves started and let me show you my almost finished mask that we will complete at the end of today's tutorial. For myself, I prefer navy, so this is one thing that I've gone for. So I'm going to be completing this one on camera with you. I still have one more row to do, and also I have to create the ears just like you see. You can use elastics if you want to, if you want to wrap that around, and you can also then try it on and make sure that the chain is going to fit. On page number three, which I don't have here because I've already cut it out, there is a real life sample of the template that you can use. I just grabbed an old t-shirt. I left it uh, just regular and I went through two layers so that I could get two. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use a regular sewing needle and thread in order to secure this and then I'm going to sew it to the particular sample that I have. So let's get started today and we're going to start off with the slip knot. This is classified as an easy level project. And what we're going to do then is chain 29. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and go to 29 for me. Meet me back here in just a moment. So let's begin. I have 29 on here. I'm going to go second chain from the hook and I'm going to slip stitch. So slip stitch in the first two chains. So 1 and 2. I'm now in the next four chains going to single crochet. So one, two, three, and four. Then I'm going to do 16 half double crochets. So continue along. So 16 in a row. So let's count together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. The next four in a row will each be a single crochet. So let's begin. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then finally the last two will each be a slip stitch. So one and two. So we're going to move on to row number two, uh, sorry row uh, one this was the foundation so let's move on to row number one. So row number one is the entire whole project that is going to be ending up in five inches because we're doing slip stitches on the outside and then halves here it's going to cause it to bowl out. So before you turn your project, just chain up one and you need to slip stitch in the first two. It's easier if you slip into the back loop only. So slip only in the back loop. So when it's turned this way, it's the back loop. So I'm having you do it this way because you can see it. So slip stitch in the first one and then turn as you're doing, as you're pulling it through. Then slip into the back of the next one. So the first two are slip stitches. Guess what the next four are? In the back loops only, there's 
four single crochets in a row. So one, two, three, and four. And now what are the next 16? That's right, it's gonna be a half double crochet. So we just count those out, so I won't count them completely on camera with you. So one, two, and three, and go all the way to 16. If you feel confident, you can continue to half double crochet without counting, and just look for the final uh, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's where you're gonna start your single crochet for four, and slip stitch for two. So it depends on you. If you can see the stitch and count it, then do it. If not, just count to 16, and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So my 16th is complete. I can see six stitches left. Can you see 16? Or sorry, six stitches left. Can you see six? If you can see it, then you don't need to count these half double crochets. So just the last, the next four are single crochet only. I think I'm slipping up in the way that I'm speaking about these stitches. <laughs> so the, the four here are, are single crochets in the back loop only. And then finally the last two are slip stitching. So one and two. Continue in that back loop right to the end. So this is all this project is. And you're just going to keep going row by row. So to start the next row, we chain one. And before you turn it, just get into that back loop only because you can see it before you actually physically turn the project. So slip it in first, then pull, turn it and pull through and through. And then slip the next one. And then the next four are single crochets. So one, two, three, and four. And then you got 16 halves. Then you got four singles and then you slip the final two and you just keep doing that over and over until the project is five inches tall. And so I'm gonna leave this for you, so put me on pause, get that done, it doesn't take that long, and I'm gonna take you to my other sample where I'll show you what to do next after you have your five inches. You may wanna try it on your face too just to make sure that you're comfortable with the size because you may not have as big a face as me. So I will see you on the next sample in just a second. So with the miracle, it is back and I have my other sample I'm working on. So I'm ready for the next row. So I have my five inches complete. I have uh, just kind of placed it on my face just to kind of gauge the sizing of it. So I've done that. So we're gonna turn our work and we're gonna begin the last row. And in the uh, last row, we are going to do some fun stuff. So let's begin. So we are not going to uh, fasten off at the end of this one. So chain up one and go in the back loop only. Okay, so I'm gonna turn now. So I'm gonna back loop that one, and then the next one. Now, I'm going to single crochet in the next four single crochets. So it's kind of what we already know, right? So one, two, three, and four. Then, we want to half double crochet in the next seven. So Okay, so it's slightly different. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then it says to half double crochet two together. Okay, so the next two are going to be half double crochet two together. So wrap the hook going into the back loop of the next stitch, pull through, but don't finish it. Wrap the hook again and go into the very next stitch and pull through. And you have five loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all five. It's going to bring it together. And then we're going to half double crochet in each of the next seven. So we're going to go one two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And we're coming to the other side now. So the next four in a row are single crochet. So one, two, three, and four. And then finally, the last two are slip stitching. So don't uh, fasten this off. 
and it says do not turn either. So we're going to start something new in just a moment. So let me just get that last one in okay, and then pull through and do not turn. Just hold me and we're going to do something new and we're going to get ready for the crochet ties and edging. So we're going to create one tie here, a here, and then the other side there and there. So to do each one of the ties, you're going to chain 29, so, or sorry, 59. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 56, 57, 58, 59. So now you're going to go second chain from the hook, and all you just need to do then is just um, slip stitch all the way back. So second chain, just slip on the back hump of the chain. So just slip and slip and go all the way back to your mask. And I'll see you at the uh, back at your mask, and then we'll carry on in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way back down to my mask, and I'm just slip stitching in this chain all the way down. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to continue to move along the side edge and just slip stitching on the side, just evenly across. And my goal is, is to get myself to the next corner. And then when I get to that corner, I'm going to chain 59. And then I'm going to do exactly what I just did for my, my strap, where I go second chain from the hook and slip all the way back. So what I want to do is I want to do all four ties. And when I end up coming back around, because as soon as this next one's done, I'm going to travel. So I'm going to end up slip stitching, and I'll end up back to where the strap started. So I will have all then four ties then complete. Okay, so that's how you're going to do that. And what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to show you how to be able to um, do that fabric. And so once I have to the corner, chain 59, and then slip stitch second chain from the hook, and then come and slip all the way back, and then carry on. So let's do our fabric next. To do the fabric, all I did is I grabbed an old t-shirt. And then what I've done is that I cut this out. It's in real size, and I just printed it. So I printed it and then I cut it out from the actual pattern itself. So I just roughly just put it on the fabric and all I'm going to do now is just carefully trace around the outside of this and get pretty close to the same shape. I'm not a sewer, so this is a bit of a challenge for me, but um, I really want a mask. So this is what it's going to be. So I'll do my best. And so I'm going to trace this all the way around and I'll be right back. So now that I've trimmed all the way around, you may want to keep this template for when you have to do another one if you want to. Just probably keep the needles with it and uh, I'll just put that aside. So now I have two here, pretty much the same size. So do you see that there's a fold line on here? So what I want to do is that I want to fold up the edges both together and I'm going to take some pins and I'm just going to pin roughly the around the outside in the same kind of dimension. So just kind of folding both over and then pin them together. And then I am gonna have to use a strand of thread in order to sew this so that the fold is in. And what this does is it prevents it from fraying. And then when we sew it to the project, it'll be face down so that you end up with a nice fold on the outside of the project. So then just fold over your edges and then just pin them. Now I've roughly pinned out my outside. So what I'm gonna do now, this is a way big needle, it's the only thing I can find. I, ca I can't justify buying a sewing machine. So I'm gonna stay on this side of the project, so um, where the fold is, and then I'm just gonna insert in. I'm pulling the thread through, so it's just regular sewing thread. And what I do when I do this kind of stuff is that I put a slip knot on the other side of this. So when I come back through, all I'm going to do then is that I'm going to go right through that slip knot and that kind of locks it in a place and I do that when I do yarn crafts anyway. So I'm just going to pull that through and then it will lock onto itself. So as I'm working my way across this um, folded edge is going to appear on the inside so I want to kind of just make sure that I'm continuing to fold as I'm going in and out of this project. Continue to go and just sew your edging all the way around and uh, you can remove the stitching um, sewing pins as you're working your way around. And I'll see you at the end of this round. So here is my fabric. I have folded it and I have uh, sewn it into position. I told you I'm not a professional sewer. So this is what it looks like on the other side. It's pretty close to the shape. 
I'm not going to judge too much. But I want to take you back to my sample now and I've got all of my strands, uh, strings done and I want to show you how to finish this off. So there is a proper way to finish it off and you are going to be wearing it today. So just create an extra long tail there and you're going to need a tapestry needle. So just pull it shut and then just take it through the tapestry needle. Okay, so I'm just going to put it through the tapestry needle and I'm just going to take it and I'm going to put the strand underneath the stitch work. So don't mess with the edge of it, just stay within the, the plies and go in one direction. And then go back in a slightly different path in the other direction. Stay within the plies. Two. And then finally, third time is a charm. So back and forth three times. So you're going to want to do that with the starting strand too. And then you can get that done too. So do that with your starting strand and then we'll, we'll just, we'll just uh, review on how to put that t-shirt fabric cloth into Okay, now that my strands are now complete, I'm going to lay this down. So I've determined that this is the inside. So see where the two together came? That's considered the nose, I believe. So if it's not, I'm wrong then. So I'm just going to lay this in the inside and it's a pretty much the same coloring. If, if it wasn't, that's okay too. And all I'm just going to do now is just pin that into position. So I'm just going to come in the outside of here, just stay in a corner. And when I poke it through, I just, this needle is not the best. So um, I'm going to poke it through and I'm just going to grab onto some plies of this yarn. I know it's kind of hard to see probably for you. So I'm just going to get onto some plies and it will hold it. So I put a slip knot on the other side of this blue string on a blue <laughs> mask and uh, it is there. And all I want to do is I want to loop that through and then that'll help tie that there together. So now I'm just going to trace around and I'm going to make sure the fabric stays on the inside of the framing of the mask. And it's pretty much the same color. I could probably get away with going all the way on the outside, but I just want to just pick up some strands and it's kind of just sitting and floating on the inside. So I have just sewn in my piece here. It's permanently attached. So if anything happens and I need to remove it, I can just cut a strand of these uh, sewing threads and be able to do it. On the other side, you don't see it there and it matches the same color. So, you know, just like yarn, you can see through the one section here, but through this where my nose and mouth will be is completely solid because I have two layers of fabric. So now I can enjoy. I have tried it on this really good design and uh, I'm ready to go outside. Have a good day and we hope to see you again right here. It's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com.